Hello there, one. Welcome to another Purpose Oak Club with Shadow James, and um, I'm certain you actually being uh, blessed of all our previous videos. And by the grace of God, today again we are coming with another powerful session, just about ten minute session for you. And I'm certain your life is never going to be the same again. Before I get right into it, our church, our service today, I'm certain you were blessed. Hope you took note and you are ready to actually take, you know, actions as regards the notes you took. Because it's not actually enough for us to just take notes. In church, it's actually also very vital and important that we decide to actually act accordingly with what we actually learned. Because learning is not um, just enough. We must decide to actually act in accordance with what we learned. That is what completes learning. All right. So um, I hope that challenged someone, and you are actually ready to walk by that. Thank you so much once again for joining me. I am Chef James. I will see you right back. Yeah, welcome back. And um, today I actually want to talk about something that is very, very um, important to me. Yeah, I mean, it is subject matter that is important to me that you may want to call uh, my assignment to major into the body of Christ and maybe to the world at large. And that is the subject of purpose. I've come to realize that um, a number of persons really do not know that they are here for a purpose. We also have people who know that they are here for a purpose, but do not know that they are supposed to live a life of purpose. We also know, we also have people who know that they are here for a purpose, know that they are supposed to live a life of purpose, but are yet to discover their purpose. We also have people who have discovered their purpose, but are yet to start living a life of Purpose. They are actually, you know, discombobulated as regards how they have to go about fulfilling the reason for their living. Although it's been discovered, but they are still confused as to how to go about it. And then we have the fifth category of people that I think I've seen in my life who have actually discovered their purpose and are, are, are on their way to fulfilling purpose. I mean, they are already living a fulfilling life. So, um, but my challenge today, the, or the challenge I really want to address today is the part of discovery of purpose. And, um, you know, it's amusing how people just feel they can actually look at themselves and choose their purpose for themselves. I mean, look at who they are, look at what they, they have and then decide that this is what my purpose is supposed to be or this is what my purpose is unfortunately that is you know that is against scripture when we check scripture carefully we will realize that for each and every instance where we saw that people discovered their purpose god had to come to play god came into play god had to re you know reveal their purpose to them and today, I'm actually just going to be telling you five ways by which I have discovered, five wrong ways by which I have discovered that people chose their purpose. Or people discovered their purpose. Five wrong ways by which people have discovered their purpose. I really want to hope that you will also decide after listening to this podcast to either also consider how have you also discovered your purpose is it in accordance with these five wrong ways and as a matter of fact as much as they are wrong it's not as if they entirely or totally negate purpose in themselves only that you cannot receive a reward for whatever you thought you have discovered that is your purpose in these five ways in these five ways because i've seen a number of persons who are also running with this kind of purpose or with this kind of thing they call their purpose and they are they are absolutely intentional as one of us of them are even influencing their world with this wrong purpose they have discovered 
However, God is not necessarily after you just influencing your world. God is after you doing your part, playing your part, just as he has wired you or as he has sent you. Just imagine that when you, a, a, child, a child is given back to and then the hand begins to operate the way the leg is supposed to and the leg is doing the work of the hand. What are you going to say about that? That is, that is not correct. Alright? It is not correct. So that is the way a lot of people are living. A lot of people are living in a way by which God has not ordained them to live or God has not sent them to live. They are in fact prosperous in it, but it is not about prosperity. When it comes to the matter of purpose, it is not about whether you are successful or not. It is about whether you are in the right purpose. It is about whether you are doing what God sent you exactly to act to do. So if you are not doing what God sent you exactly to act to do, I tell you, there is no reward. Because you remember the Bible told us in the book of Corinthians that our works will pass through fire. And then whichever one is made of clay of wood will be burnt in the fire. It is only the ones that are actually made of gold and silver that are going to survive. And we get what I'm saying. So when you are doing what God has not sent you to act to do, even God is not pleasing himself. Remember the Bible, Jesus was speaking to the teaching the disciples, he said, many will say unto me that the Lord, Lord, we heal the sick in your name, we, we, we raise the dead, we did so many things in your name, but I'm going to tell them, depart from me, for I do not know you. So it is not about just doing good works alone. Your good works must be in your purpose. Your good works must be in your purpose. So you cannot... You cannot just pick up anything and feel that is my purpose and start living it. The fact that you can sing, you you are very good at singing, does not mean you should you should start a, a music ministry and then start going from one church to the other to bless life and feel you are fulfilling purpose. That is not enough. So let's look at five ways quickly by which people I have seen people discover purpose. Five wrong ways by which I have seen people discover purpose, and the first one. By God's grace in subsequent videos, I'm actually going to be expounding on, on each of these wrong ways. But for today, I'm, I'm just going to list them or mention them. Just so that for you to actually look at your own self and check. Have you also discovered what you call purpose via these five wrong ways? If you have, it's just a challenge for you. I'm not saying what you are doing is bad. It actually doesn't have to be bad. But it's not enough to be good. You have to be right. Because not all good things are right. Glory to God. So you need to be right to actually receive a reward from God. It's not enough to be good. So the first wrong way that I've discovered, I've seen people discover their purpose is what people call passion. Yeah, I, I know a number of motivational speakers have actually told people you have to look at the place of your passion to discover your purpose. As good as that may sound, I'm not against it because the truth is, for whatever you want to do in life, you have to be passionate about, about it. Even when you've discovered your rightful purpose, you must be passionate about it in order, in order to be successful in it, in order to be fulfilled in it. However, it is not enough to just look at where your passion lies, because passion can be, can be wrong. You can be passionate about the wrong thing. You can be passionate about the wrong thing. Glory to God. There are some ex okay, don't, don't let me expound on it. The second wrong way by which I've seen people discover their purpose is in their temperament. You, you see people encourage others to also look at their temperament, whether they are choleric, melancholy, sanguine, and um, what is flag, flag, and all of that. And okay, but as much as this is also cool, because you have to know yourself, you have to understand who you are in order to be able to succeed in whatever you do. However, it is not enough to just look at your, 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 your temperament. It's not enough to just say, because I'm choleric, then I need to be a CEO. Because I'm choleric, I must be the leader of whatever. No, not at all. Or because I'm a sanguine, then I should go into comedy. No, it's not enough. Of course, God put these things there to actually aid our purpose, to aid us who you know, you know, our success in fulfilling, fulfilling the purpose for which he has sent us. However, it is not enough to just look at your temperament and feel 
that is actually a place to look at and pick your purpose from. The third wrong way I've seen people discover purpose is the place of pain. There are people have said, look at maybe the difficulties you've gone through in life. Look at, uh, for instance, maybe um, you, you usually fall sick. That it's actually a sign for you that God is actually calling you in the medical world, or maybe you, um, maybe at the point in time you had a car that was giving you trouble and all of that. Maybe that was God telling you that it's time to go into the the engineering world or something. That's that's. I mean, it's well, it could also be a pointer, but it is not enough to point out the reason for your life. It's not enough to point out the reason for your living. The fourth wrong way by which I've also seen people discover purpose is when people look into their degree. When people look into their degree, I hear people say things like, the reason why the university, your university gave you the course you are studying is probably because God wants you to do something there and all of that. God, God does not play Ludo with our lives. It was not at the point at which you want to gain admission that it decided your purpose. God decided our purpose before the foundation of the heart. So he knew the exact reason why you were coming to act. So it is not because whatever, maybe because, uh, because now he now sees that there is a need. That's why he is now deciding to, to you know, carve out your purpose in that need. No, God actually created you for the need. It is not because the need is not arising that God is not sending you there. God knew the need was going to be. That was why he sent you. So it is not enough to say because I finished as an educationist, now the next thing is to go and start a school. Not at all. It's not enough. That could also be a pointer. Please mark my words. I'm not saying those things are entirely wrong. They could only be pointers to your, your purpose, but then they are not determinants for your purpose. And the fifth wrong way by which I've seen people discover purpose is their family background. It's their family background. I've seen people say, because, um, you know, um, I came out from this kind of background, then maybe God, God has called me into whatever. People say, because I'm a child of a pastor, then it means that I should also become a pastor automatically. Or because my father was an apostle, then he should also have, the, the, the lineage should should continue his legacy, I should also become an apostle. Or because my mom was a teacher, she loved teaching all her life, and then it's time I also pick teaching up as, a, as, as, as my purpose. Not at all. It is wrong. It is good, quite all right, but it is not right. It is not right. So, do you to check yourself, check those five items I just listed. Have you discovered your purpose through any of these? And I'm just here to tell you today, that it is not biblical to actually check, you know, to determine your purpose by reason of these things. There are actually a number of other things that people mention, but I do, I think this, this is actually the five most common that people use, and I feel to just let you know today that they are not right. And someone may want to be asking me, may want to ask me rather, then, you know, you should expand on this. Why would you say it is wrong for me to pick up my purpose from my passion, from my temperament, and the whole of that? By the grace of God, in subsequent videos, I'm actually going to be talking about those things and making you realize or see the reason why I think and I know as a matter of fact that it is actually wrong to pick up your purpose from any of these things. Alright, thank you so much for staying all through to um, the blessed of today's episode of Purpose O'Clock. I'm certain you've actually been blessed and maybe challenged by the grace of God. We're going to start a new series as a result of this particular video, talking about the five wrong ways by which people discover their purpose. Hope to see you again next week Sunday. I remain Sheldon James. Bye.